a little mud on it. That's always a that's a painful sight to see when it hadn't even been in the water yet. This is not mine. I'm fishing with the Turkelinator today in the new boat. He got one very similar to mine, Fun and Son. Hooked him up as well, and that is a pretty boat, my friend. This is early pre-spawn, early pre-spawn fishing today, and today is a mystery tackle box day. Uh, I think there's some baits in here that are gonna work for the place that we're at. God willing that the, the water is not uh, two degrees out there. It's been very cold in Texas, but we're starting to get a little bit of a warm up, which is awesome. That always gets me excited. Something new I just discovered in the box, by the way, guys, if you wanna get one of these boxes, if you're getting into fishing, spring fishing's coming up, if you're kind of unsure about what baits to get, you want to make it easy on yourself, you can go ahead and sign up for Mr. Tackle Box. There's a link in the description where you can get $10 off your first box subscription, which is really good. It's not quite half off, but it's it's getting up there. It's a nice, nice discount. And we are looking at something new in here. I haven't seen before. These are the Stickies worm hooks. So I see this, and I also see a Catchco bait. This is a Pro Series bait. Gator Hog? Yes! I know I can catch fish on that out here. It's basically a watermelon red, which is always good pre-spawn and spawn. There's a net bait in here, which is kind of a bigger hog. And we also have a uh, kind of a square bill deal. This is a six cents movement. It's kind of like a wake bait slash really wide wobbling jerk bait. Gotta have a jerk bait in the box. January through March, I just say you gotta have a jerk bait in here. This is a Lucky Craft. They're known for making pretty high quality stuff. And then we've got some other stuff that might be better for deeper water. I'm not sure if we could, I could definitely catch fish on this, but this would be if we see them on the graph a little bit more grouped up. Comes pre-rigged with a shad. Made by Roadrunner though. Number one crappie fishing lure in the nation. I don't know if that's true, I just threw that out there. And the old ball and chain. If you guys have ever thought about getting into Carolina rigging, it could be kind of a mess getting all that stuff, uh, rigging it up. It's probably the longest time ever taken and it, besides an A-rig, to rig up something in a bass boat. Carl's stash, which I got a, got a stash going on right now. I need to shave, but anyway, been on the road. Bear with me, folks. So you got everything you need in there. Let's go ahead and get it done for two Carolina rigs, because you always break one off. So good to go there. And I think that is kind of the essentials here. Enough talking about it. Let's freaking do it. So it looks very good, Rob. Thank you. Very good. You like the mud? The mud can be overlooked. Moving baits, I call them anything that's like a spinner bait, chatter bait, crank bait, something you're like constantly retrieving. They tend to eat it a lot better here in the south when the water's over 55. I found that. That's been my non peer research reviewed scientific data over the years. Right oh, 57 right 57. now. Okay. So the, the air, the air temperature is well, it's definitely colder. It was like 33 this morning, so the water's probably gradually warming up a few degrees more than what we originally saw when we first got in, but this is good. So, since Rob's throwing the jerk, he's actually throwing the jerk bait, the exact one I was gonna throw in the MTV box. And look at this, look at this round. I'm way back here, this is crazy. and we're both up front. <laughs> and Rob's boat is actually a foot, foot longer than mine, so we've got an extra, a little extra space here, but this is beautiful. First cast deployed. Oh, you got the first cast. I, oh, I did. <laughs> Come on, man. What are you waiting on? There we go. You're just in awe of your, your boat, you just taking it, it in. I'm throwing this this uh, Ketchco Gator Hog. This is a 20 pound fluoro. Actually, this might be 15. I'm unsure, but I got it on a seven foot heavy, big sexy. So it's ready to it's ready to snatch a good size one. We got a few stumps over here. There's a little uh, see the old dead weed line. There is a cast net in the tree. That's always a good sign. Question, how do you get up that high? I think, I think they regulate this water pretty well. That's, that's one of those where you throw it and uh, you've had about 14 Coors Lights and you're like, I'm just not even going in there. I'm oh, not even gonna mess with that, yeah. The Coors Light won that battle. Yeah, it sure did. These fish aren't gonna be super jazzed up. Um, so that's where the jerk bait comes in handy. Gives them a little time to come over there and grab it. And I'm fishing this Texas rig kind of on some targets at the moment. I'm letting it sit there a little bit longer than I, I would when, uh, you know, late spring and summer, hopping it pretty fast. Give it a little time to sniff it. Come up there and lick the cricket. Do we want this to be the first one? Yeah, it has to be. Good <laughs> Hey! Thank you, Thank you. All right. Thank you for not, uh... Oh, oh, oh he's peeing. peeing all over the boat. <laughs> Sorry. 
I squeezed him a little hard. That was a light bite right there. On the boat, hey, it's been landed. Can I give it a sniff to christen the vessel? Please, please. Green on green. Ah, that's so much yeah, all right. Oh, dang, dude. Is he on? I can't feel him anymore. That was a, oh, he oh, came off. Dude, damn. Oh, I'm so that was a, that was a better fight, man. Was it a good one? Yeah, it had some beef behind it. Look, I got a scale and it's been out. Dang it. So that's three bites that have come off the edge. We've got trees and stuff, so they're kind of on this break. We've got a creek channel just barely off to our left. We're, I think we're actually on the edge of it right now. We're at 11 feet. And as soon as we, it dropped off and we got some more cover options, we started catching a few fish, so. Fish? Thought I got tapped. That a dick. Oh, I lost him. It boogered me. Just going really slow. I think soft flies, it could be the deal, honestly. This is a smaller bait, too. So. I think I'm going to get the jerk bait. Oh, there he's again. You got him again? Yeah. I can see the log right next to it. Yep. He's on it. I think soft flies. Yeah. There we go. Yep. <sighs> That fish came back and, and did it. Right there, man. Uh, it's, going away. it's a white one. Here, you want to take the sure. Let's uh, let's pull it down. Actually, right. Oh, we are pulled down. Well, yeah, they're not really doing their job. All right. Second one in the boat. The old gator hog. And that sticky hook. That is uh, this is a good little bait for this situation. They're not really super aggressive right now the jerk bait bite you had rob was that like a, a hard jerk or was it just no. heavy just sock sock so that's that's kind of been the case i actually could see a stump right there i got polarized glasses on which is a nice you want to have those on this time of year so you can see little stumps and grass lines and things like that had a bite the fish uh let go of it and i threw that bait back in there and it's such a that's a very small little creature bait. Super easy for them to eat. So that net bait, I may get out that, that bait out a little, bit, a little bit later when they get a little bit more aggressive. But uh, for right now, that's uh, it's doing the job. So give it a sniff, let her go. See ya. Ooh, water's a little chilly. You don't want to work a bait super fast when that water's cold. We're, we're at 57, which they will bite soft plastics at that point pretty good, but you can't get in a hurry. We got a, a couple of good little, just kind of little points, and this creek channel runs along this bank, so in the very back of the creek, like a half mile down, that's where the fish will most likely spawn. It's back in the flat, but for right now, they're just kind of setting up, getting ready. Got one. Yep, little guy. Yep. Get in the rip. Oh, was he off? Don't tell me he came off that one. No, he he was a ways off. Was he was kind of on that drop, and he was he was running out this way as he ate it. He is a healthy one. Oh, got him in the bottom. Yeah, he was coming out towards us, towards the creek channel. So he's pretty white down there. Cold and white. That's why I always say high speed gear ratio. That fish bit it. I wasn't sure because it was a light bite and then it was just, he was just coming at me. I'm digging this. I'm not gonna lie. This skater hog is um, it's pretty sexual chocolate right now. New term of the new year. This is the time of year where I like to have like a, some sort of moving bait, like a lipless or a square or something to that effect on there. I've got that on. That's, a, that's really a staple of uh, Texas fishing. And, in the grass but we got a lot of stumps right here a lipless crankbait will get snagged on those stumps so that right there the movement six cents movement looks pretty awesome six cents makes some really good baits a little backstory on the guy behind these we actually fished fish college tournaments when i was uh when i was fishing college tournaments and used to hand paint lures for a bunch of people and then he's done well get him rob yeah nice fish man Nice. There we go. Hey, it's my first fish on my own boat. So we've had a few bites off the stumps now. Not a, not giant, that's gotta be a female for the Look size the of the body for the mouth. tail thickness, yeah. yeah that's so funny. Very, very thick. He's the king of knowing what kind of fish are. I didn't go to school for that. Throw this a little bit since we have so many. 
stumps, we can maybe hit some of these that we can't see that are underwater. Put the movement up for a second. I'm gonna throw, throw that jerk bait. Rob has already caught one on this, but I just wanna see. It just looks like a very good way to target that movement. It's just a little too much movement for right a second, I believe. Maybe later on in the day or if we get, uh, we got a couple of warm nights. Yes, yes. Exactly where you should have been. Oh, oh, you got a bottom jaw. Bottom jaw. Perfect. First little area attempt, not bad. That Texas rig is strong. The gator hog, I liked it. Actually, I'm wearing the Texas rig hat today. So what, what we're about to do is go find a very similar area, like going into a creek. I'm almost out of the gator hogs already, so I may switch up to something else. Targeting the stumps and, and grass lines pretty specifically, and then just, just working it slow, and the bite is light. It's a very light bite. you got to be ready. you got to be watching the line and everything. So on to the next hole. See if we can get another one. Here we go. Look at all the here. You got them? Yep. I'm going to jerk bait. Yep. Oh, it came off, dude. That one had some weight. Dang it. Jeez. I just got bit off on that jerk bait. Got me on the tree. And... Ah, dang it. I'm going to put the mud sticks down. That sucks. Yeah, that was two good bites on the jerk bait in here. And... Boop, boop. Gone. Two good ones right there. 10 pound test. Texas around trees. That's to be expected. It's getting real windy right here. I think we're gonna head over to the other side of the lake, maybe get in some calmer water and fish some little subtle pockets. Much calmer area right now. More isolated clumps of grass. There's not a whole lot of stumps here, but there's two There's two little pockets off the, the main lake right here that look pretty good. I'm gonna check the Fisherman's Almanac. 33% moon phase. First peak is at 1028, getting close to two. So we're we're in the dip right now. Peak peak of the day is 440 p.m. So right now we're in the we're in the eat a sandwich mode. Oh, we don't have any sandwiches. Look, look, look at that. Look at that right there. You see, there's a big fish right there. You see that? That's a big fish That's on a big bait. Fish. There's a bait right there. 20 foot of water. Okay, all right. All right, Megatron. So let me explain to you the situation here. We have dedicated the last couple hours of our lives to fishing some grass lines. We were thinking there might be some fish that push up into some of that new emerging grass or right on the, the old dead weed line that's over here behind me. All of our bites really have been on wood and I think what's going on here, the lake's a little down. I don't think the fish are really comfortable pushing all the way up yet. Either the water's dropping or, or something's going on where they're not all the way shallow. They're kind of on that first little drop and that seems to be where a lot of the wood is growing. It's, it's some of the places, that's where the old creek channel is, that's where the oldest, biggest trees uh, grew up and a lot of them fell down. So there's a good hard bottom, there's root structure down there. They're hanging on the hard stuff. So we're gonna go back to fishing some wood. We got other lures in the box. We're gonna send them down. Send them down to the depths of the hearts, woods. Got a deeper stump field ahead. This is the move. Putting on a bigger Texas rig. There it is, now that. That's a true hog. That's a mad pack of watermelon crawfish. Mmm. Boy, these smell great. I just love that smell. I, I immediately associate that smell with catching fish. Now this has got a lot more appendages, so typically on baits like this, I do like to throw a, a bigger weight because it's gonna take a lot more momentum to get the get the flappies to flap. Five aught hook on this. So this is not the, the stickies three aught. This is a five aught hook. I want to make sure we detach those little buggers and that right there is going to do it to it. We are back at the old Coors Light uh, net tree. There's one. Oh, that is not yeah. the line to be Oh, that is on a little bit bigger bait there. What is going on here? What are they, they on the bottom now? 
That one was, but it's. <laughs> I would way rather throw a Texas rig and have the oh. You know, I'll throw that jig. Barely hooked though. Rob just took one to the oh. finger. That bass just took one to the grill hard with this setup. That's the mad packer right there. That's basically like a bigger version of what I was throwing this morning, which is better suited for fishing real close to these trees, but this is 25 pound fluoro, seven, six heavy, big saxine. You know, that right there has got some beef to it. There's one. in the tripod the tripod <laughs> yeah. it's a thick fish thick fish had it good got all that nice juicy scent on there he wasn't letting go okay back on the Texas rig game some of these fish could be suspended they're trying to get up higher in the water column to warm up a bit that 100% looks like a shad Try to reel that by some of these trees. Why not? There's one on the spinner. No. Yes. I got one on the on the underspin. On the underspin. Hold on. They are just cruising this bank. Yeah. Ate it pretty decently. Ate it very good, actually. Come here. Oh gosh! You just broke my broke my thing we're just gonna put that rod away now oh right right home about there folks so, yeah. there was one you got him is he big is he giant smack him <laughs> oh he's swimming with it oh oh, hey, oh hey all right i got it yeah he was swimming swimming right at us you gotta let him tap it a few times just let him play with it when they're when they're under 17 inches you gotta let them tap it the fish running with my bait wow <laughs> you had like i i watched him and watched him and watched him well that's the first yep. wow whoa oh, God, oh. No. Oh, no. oh no stay still oh, buddy no. oh no i'm just trying to help you don't see this every day oh i was at him oh my god dude you gotta help me out here what do you want me to do i don't know so if you're just checking in here on the channel, if you've skipped ahead, um, a small bass has made it way, made its way into the uh, trolling motor <sighs> gap. Yeah, we got him out. Okay, let's make sure he's good. I kind of felt bad. Talk about being traumatized. He's. Good. I've never seen that before. I've seen I've seen him kind of like go into the tray and then pop back out, but they're not small like. That was a deadly gap. Rob, you just did a good thing. You did a great um, thing. Imagine, imagine him being like half his size, gone. Yeah. He would have slid down in there, I couldn't get my hand in there. I'd have a dead bass in my boat. Every time I fish with Rob, something interesting happens, occurs. There's so much room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently, I've still lost my equilibrium from ice fishing. Um, <laughs> I really just, I went four different directions right there. So there's this weird, like, half step thing. <laughs> I 100% guarantee you this is not an act at all. I'm not trying to hurt myself. Trust me, I got plenty of problems already. <laughs> Imagine that just going in your lower unit. <laughs> oh, That'd be God. bad. Well, me and old Rob have concluded it is time to go get some barbecue. According to the, uh, the Fishing Times, the Almanac, uh, we pretty much caught fish at the peak times today. I never paid attention to that. I just thought I'd do it today. And we actually ended up doing fairly decent. Just didn't, uh, didn't catch the Mondo. Biggest fish was probably like three in the threes or something. I don't know. 18 inches for y'all that are, you know, into measuring fish by the, the inch. The maiden voyage is done. And a great day on the water with lunkers. I know a lot of you guys like to watch us fishing together. It's a good thing. We kind of learned to how to fish on similar lakes, so we kind of have a, a similar style and approach um, when we're out there on the water. We tend to tend to fish really well together. Also have a good time. It's all about good times when you're out there, y'all. 
Uh, today was a pretty good day with the box. Caught fish on just about everything, but uh, had two really, really effective soft plastics in there that I liked a lot. That Mad Packa and the other very similar Ketchko bait in there and a lot of other good bait. It was just a very good box today. So if you want to check one of those out for the future months, use the, the promo code down in the description and you can get yourself 10 full US dollars off your first box subscription and get going with it. Maybe experiment a little bit, get some new baits you've never fished before. And I just want to congratulate Rob on the on the brand new boat. We pretty much have twin boats and these freaking just got to say thanks to Fun Sun. They, they hooked it up with some good boats. And we are still kind of in the boat naming process. You can go to Rob's channel, leave a comment below on what uh, what you think this boat should be called and my boat. I'm kind of partial to Silver Bullet. That just kind of came up. Yeah, actually you guys didn't, you haven't checked out my maiden voyage yet. We were filming some other stuff um, the, the other day, <laughs> but I still got a lot of break-in. We kind of, we've kind of been learning about the break-ins on these motors and everything. So there's going to be more break-in time. Don't worry about that. So stay tuned. Subscribe right here to the channel, y'all. We'll see you on the next one.